In the last video, we gave instructions for delivering insulin with a vial and syringe, the classic method for giving insulin. There are several other methods for giving insulin, and each of them have their own benefits. In this video, we'll explain some of them and what you might be able to expect when using them. One of the most common methods for delivering bolus insulin is the insulin pen. Insulin pens have become incredibly popular because they are convenient to use and easy to carry around. Insulin pens deliver accurate insulin doses by twisting a small dial until the desired number of units is shown on the pen. Some insulin pens come loaded with a cartridge of bolus insulin that cannot be removed, while others can be reloaded with new insulin cartridges after they run out. Insulin pens also come with small needle caps that need to be changed after every use. These caps come with small plastic lids to protect from accidental pokes and keep the needles clean. It's important to prime an insulin pen each time it is used. This eliminates any air in the needle and ensures that only insulin is delivered. To prime an insulin pen, simply dial in two units of insulin and push the plunger or button on the end of the pen. If insulin comes out of the needle, the pen is primed. If no insulin comes out, repeat until the pen is primed. Another method for delivering insulin is an insulin pump. An insulin pump is a device that can help regulate the amount of insulin that is given throughout the day. Some insulin pumps have more advanced features than others, but all insulin pumps work basically the same way. An insulin pump has an internal computer that stores the individual's carb ratio and correction factor. The pump does all the insulin math when it receives blood glucose and carb information, and it suggests the insulin dose that will cover the carbs and give a correction if it is needed. Inside the insulin pump, there is an area for storing insulin called the insulin reservoir, which usually holds between 200 and 300 units. Insulin pumps use only rapid-acting or bolus insulin. Pump users no longer use basal insulin in their care routine, so it is very important to make sure that the pump is connected and working properly at all times. The insulin is delivered in small hourly doses to simulate what the long-acting insulin would be doing. This is called the basal rate because it is copying the effects of a basal insulin dose. Your care team will help determine the appropriate basal rate, which will likely change over time. As part of the insulin pump, there is a pump site or infusion set that sits on the skin. On the underside of the pump site, there is a short, thin tube called a cannula that is inserted in the skin with a small needle. The needle goes into the skin and inserts the cannula. After insertion, the needle is removed and the thin cannula stays under the skin to deliver insulin into the fatty tissue. The set is usually placed around the stomach area or upper arm, but it can also be placed on the thigh, hips, or buttocks. Pumps are considered tubed or untubed. A tubed pump includes a catheter, a soft tube that looks like a small hose, that is connected from the pump site to the pump mechanism and insulin reservoir. The pump device is like a miniature computer. It likely has buttons and a small screen to allow the wearer to enter information like blood glucose and carb counts, as well as change the pump's settings. Untubed insulin pumps are also called patch pumps. In untubed pumps, the pump mechanism and insulin reservoir are all contained in a small case that sits directly on the skin as part of the pump site. An untubed pump will most likely come with a small device or use a smartphone to allow the wearer to control the pump. Regardless of the type of insulin pump, the wearer will need to change out the reservoir, tubing, and pump site every three days maximum. The pump reservoir will also need to be refilled with insulin every time the pump site is changed. A child in their family chooses an insulin pump based on their preference for what type of technology is most important for them. There are several options of insulin pump available, and each may require different maintenance and offer different features. New technology is available every year and can quickly cause information to become outdated, so it is best to talk to your diabetes care team about what options for insulin delivery may work best for you. In the next module, we'll talk more about how to find carb counts using nutrition facts labels and tips for maintaining a healthy, balanced diet for people with type 1.